All right, so at the end of the last session, uh, we broke off abruptly. Uh, that's because I encountered some technical issues that needed to be um, fixed and corrected uh, so that what I was presenting you in my scripts matched um, what I was actually doing. And so now we're back. We're going to finish up the Spark demo by executing a Spark script on the EC2 cluster uh, that we created in the last session. So we use the Spark scripts that we downloaded to create the cluster up on EC2, just a very little cluster, a master and a slave. And now we are going to do just a little sample program there. In order to do that, we're going to make use of our command line environment. And we saw in the previous section of the way we configured the credentials and the keys. Um, again, if you have questions about that, the Amazon help is the best place to go for more details for you know things that may vary with different operating systems. So let's take a look at the the Spark instructions up on the GitHub site. Um, so we have configured the cluster. Now we want to just log in directly to the cluster. So we are going to use on our local directory the directory that is um, is on our local machine. Once you uh, completed the, the setup, some of your last lines should have said something like, your cluster has started and given you a web address. So that web address is important. That will let you actually look at the cluster and make sure that everything is, is up and running. Um, so we can, we can use these links to monitor the, the cluster. So if we go to those links on port 8080, we're going to see we've got a running cluster. Um, and it's going to tell us a little bit of information about the usage of memory and cores and if things are busy on those, on those instances. We can see, again, a little bit of that from the Amazon uh, site as well. Um, so you have a, a couple of different options of how to monitor your system. Um, the Amazon watch panels, but we also have the Spark specific uh, panel that's available through port 8080. Now to actually run the program, we're again going to do this on the command line. So we're going to log in and we do that with a command that looks something like this. Um, in our local Spark directory, the EC2 directory that we use to to run the configuration script. We also run a login command from there, dot slash spark ec2. Uh, replace the key name and the key location path with the paths and the names of your own key. Uh, again, I was using Amazon key, so I've got Amazon key and Amazon key.pem. So I say login and then the name of the cluster. Now I've just been using my spark cluster. You could use um, different names for different clusters and manage several different cluster groups like that. Um, this sort of simplifies the long uh, IP address or URL that you might otherwise have to use. Okay, so I run that command and I'm logged in. I'm now at the command line on the remote system, on the Amazon system, as we can see from the uh, little logo here. And I want to get into an interactive Scala shell on the remote system. And I'm going to do that. Again, it's outlined in our instructions. You may have to hunt around um, for the, the directory that has this on my system. I'm, I'm not really 100% sure this will be the same if you're running a slightly different flavor of things, or it might not, it may move in the future. But I can look at my directory structure. I have a Spark directory, CD Spark. Uh, look in that directory. I have a bin directory. So I'm going to go into bin and in this directory is my Spark shell. Uh, so then I can launch the Spark shell by just saying dot slash Spark shell master local. And those options are act. There's a little bit more explanation in the Spark documentation about that. I'm not going to um, go into that into those details here either. 
So we can see there's some confirmation that things are spinning up. We get a Spark logo, um, and it's creating this local environment. And now I have a command line prompt that says Scala. So I can type a Scala program directly in the interactive mode here. Um, so just like other programming environments, typically uh, once you have your programs worked out, you're just going to submit them through the shell in a, as a batch job. And that's the way most of these operations will work. But just to, to illustrate a basic example of how this is working, we're going to do it in interactive mode. So our little sample program is just this. We're going to create a, a synthetic data set uh, that is just a list of numbers from 1 to 10,000. We run that. And it starts to print out the list, and after a while it gets tired and says, you know where this is going, don't you? Um, so we have our list. And then we're going to parallelize it. So this is actually the component of the, of the instructions that's uh, distributing it out to the cluster and working with it in that format. Again, this is, this is a real basic example, but we just want to show that the commands are actually running on the cluster. It's live. It's working. And then we're going to uh, use a filter to collect data that matches our criterion. Now, our criterion is very simple. It's just the numbers in our data set that are less than 10. And we'll see what that returns. Here we go. Uh, we get some confirmation that the job is running. It doesn't take that long. Very simple. And here's our array. So we've got one, two, one, the numbers 1 through 9. The integers that are less than 10 have been returned by this function. Um, and we can, we can again go back to our interface and see this, this still hasn't really used any memory. And we now have a port 4040. Once we launch that interactive environment, we can monitor jobs at this other port 4040 and see, oh, it, it did do a little function, a collect function uh, that took 0.4 seconds and gives you some other options uh, for handling these jobs as they're submitted, keeping an eye on how, much, how many resources they're taking. Uh, so Spark gives you not quite as full featured as um, some of the other environments that we're going to see, but a little bit of a web management environment. So this example is, is really just to show you that, yes, you can create a Scala, uh, a Scala program that will run on your Spark cluster that you have created yourself uh, in the Amazon Cloud using the instructions here. Again, the slides have um, quite a bit more material, um, links to the Cloud Era uh, version of running Spark, uh, some guides from a Stanford class. You, again, you can check out the edX class that's starting up. And we looked at the Spark linear regression code as well um, to show you that a full-fledged Spark program is a little bit more, more complicated. If you Google around for instructions and YouTube videos also on other variations of this, you'll find lots of instructions. The instructions will always have to be sort of tweaked to match the latest updates. That's just part of what you learn to deal with um, in, in these environments. Um, but right now, we've, we've succeeded in our task of running a little tiny bit of Spark. And so we're going to exit the, um, the interactive Scala environment. We're going to exit the Amazon cluster. And we're also going to just, now we're back on our command line. And we want to make sure we shut down the cluster. So to shut down, there's a, again, we could go into the uh, Amazon console, select one of these guys and say terminate. Um, under instant state, we can say terminate. We always have that option, but the uh, command line interface for Spark has a little built-in uh, function to destroy the cluster that you just created. So I'm going to actually run this little guy. 
destroy cluster, destroy my Spark cluster. It asks, are you sure you're going to lose all your data? Say yes, and it's terminated. And we can actually go back into Amazon and see, if we refresh this page, we'll see things happening, that these instances are now in the process of shutting down. So that did work. You probably want to, unless until you get really comfortable with it, make sure that they are shutting down. Terminate your instances. Again, if you don't, if you don't terminate them, you're going to get get those bills. Uh, so this is a good thing. All right. So in this session, we've seen the installation of Spark on EC2 from scratch, running a quick sample program, and then terminating the cluster. And we we got a feel for how to do that, how to authenticate with credentials on the command line and how to use a few command line operations. So let's stop here before we go on to the next section.